If you're anything like me, you might be a little skeptical of compression gear. Does it work? Or is it just a very clever marketing scheme? If you look at compression gear from a marketing perspective, it's the perfect product. Consumers on their own can't be certain that it works, but the logic given for why it should work seems reasonable. For example, one claim is that by reducing muscle vibration on impact, muscles don't tire out as quickly. If you're like me and don't possess a PhD in physiology, this seems to make sense. But as consumers, how do we verify that for sure? Well, we look to science for the answer. In this video, I will attempt to answer the question, what effect does compression gear have on performance and recovery? And furthermore, as an athlete, what can I do to maximize that effect? My journey begins a few months ago when I received a pair of calf compression sleeves from Victor. Until this point, I'd never actually worn compression gear personally. Like most of you, I have seen top athletes in every sport from basketball to triathlon wearing compression gear to try and get an edge over their competition. The first thing I did was try and devise my own little experiment to see what would happen. I haven't done a ton of calf workouts in a while, so I knew that I could induce soreness pretty easily if I worked my calves hard. I got out on court and did a variety of exercises to do just that. I wore a compression sleeve on one leg for the duration of the workout and then monitored my soreness over the next few days. Some things I noticed right away was that my calf did feel less wobbly during movement and was noticeably warmer than the other leg. Especially if you train on a cold court, keeping your muscles warm will definitely help reduce injury, that's for sure. On the other hand, if you start to overheat during a hard match, that extra warmth could make you feel uncomfortable. Now with a sample size of one leg, I wouldn't feel comfortable making a claim either way. Anecdotal evidence is never enough to prove whether something works or not. So while I waited for the muscle soreness to set in, I started looking into what real studies are currently out there on the topic of compression gear. After reviewing well over 20 independent studies from reputable scientists from a range of institutions all over the world, here is what I found. First of all, I think it's worth summarizing how most of these experiments were performed. A sample size of usually around 20 people are selected and split into two groups, one wearing compression gear and one without. Prior to the main workout, some sort of benchmark would be measured. In some cases, it was a maximum squat, peak power output on the bike, vertical jump, or something else along those lines. Then some blood work would be done to measure a couple of indicators in the blood that relate to muscle damage, creatine kinase being the main marker. Next, the athletes would be required to perform some sort of activity that induced what they refer to as EIMD, or exercise-induced muscle damage. This could be anything from a repeat all-out sprints on the bike, a very heavy squat session, or a high-intensity resistance training workout. After the workout finished, athletes are then retested at various intervals after the workout, maybe after 12 hours, 24 hours, 72 hours, and then scientists would compare how the athletes performed at those intervals to their initial test to see how quickly they were recovering. For example, if an athlete squatted 200 kilograms initially, but after 48 hours they could only squat 180 kilograms, the scientists could say they had recovered to 90% of their max. They could then compare the results of the control group, the people without compression gear, to the experimental group, those who wore the compression gear, to see which group recovered to their max value faster. So going through all these studies, what did I learn? Nearly every study came to the same conclusion, that wearing compression gear during a workout or activity has no measurable effect on performance. Some of the studies I looked at didn't actually test for this, and there was one study that said there could be a slight benefit on a very specific exercise that involved joint flexion, but they couldn't say for sure. Especially for explosive or agility-based activities, compression gear has no effect. Even for things like long distance running, in most studies, no significant performance benefit was observed. 
So based on what I learned, wearing compression sleeves during your sport can be done for comfort. Like maybe you enjoy the extra warmth or the slightly reduced movement of your body parts. Feeling comfortable during your athletic performance is definitely important for sure. On the other hand, in terms of recovery, nearly every study did see a measurable benefit to using compression gear. Athletes did recover faster and often reported less soreness. In the main study that I reviewed in depth, they correlated reduced levels of creatine kinase, which would support the reported reduction in soreness. But before you go out and buy 10 pairs of compression pants, there are a few important points to note here. In most cases, the difference in recovery was there, but was very slight, sometimes as little as 1% after a full 24 hours of recovery. The biggest surprise for me was that in order to realize the recovery benefits, you can't just wear the compression gear during your performance. You actually need to wear it for a long period of time after your activity in order to recover. Some experiments had the participants wear compression gear for intervals of 12 hours on, 12 hours off. Others had participants wear compression gear during all of their waking hours for multiple days. One study went as far as making them wear the compression gear for five days straight. To summarize that bit, if you only wear compression gear during your workout, game, or match, you will not realize any benefit at all. You must wear the compression gear for many hours at a time during your recovery phase to reap the benefits. I think for elite athletes, wearing compression gear makes a lot of sense if you have to perform to your best regularly and recover fast. When 1% can be the difference between winning and losing, the extra effort is probably worth it. For the amateur, a slight reduction in muscle soreness is probably the best benefit. Realistically, if you want to make sure you perform at your best and recover faster, getting enough sleep regularly is probably the best thing you can do. Now in a few of the articles, they did a really good job explaining why there isn't a definitive answer yet on this topic. Most of these studies all do things slightly differently. They perform different exercises, they have athletes wear the compression gear for different lengths of time after the workout, the fit of the compression gear may differ, and the type of compression gear might differ. All of these reasons make it hard to perform a reliable meta-analysis. Overall though, I think it's pretty clear that for recovery, there is a measurable benefit, if worn correctly, for an extended period of time. Just so you get the full picture, of the 20 or so studies I found, three of them did show no recovery benefits. In terms of the claim that compression gear reduces muscle vibration, I did find one study that concluded that it does in fact reduce vibration on impact. However, they could not show that this affected performance in any way. That particular study was funded by Solomon in France, so I was a little weary of their results, but most of the researchers worked for independent organizations and it seemed pretty well done overall. The last thing worth mentioning, all of these studies were able to show that compression improves recovery, but were unable to determine how. Many pointed out that the science behind this improved recovery is not well understood. So most of the reasons people give why compression gear works, like improved blood flow, reduced vibration in the muscle, might not be true. Now let's jump back into my own experiment, which I now know was done improperly. So I had the opposite results. I wore the compression sleeve on my right leg. After two days, my right leg was significantly more sore than my left. Now that could be for a few reasons. Perhaps my right leg, which is my dominant leg, has more muscle tissue to damage, or maybe it was working harder despite my efforts to strain them at the same time. I definitely need to repeat this experiment, but the next time I need to wear the compression gear for a long period after the workout. I made the mistake of taking it off right away, so realistically I didn't actually test anything at all. Fortunately, I did find a study where they did the same thing as me. They had a group of participants randomly wear compression gear on one of their legs. In the end, they did find that the leg that had the compression gear was less sore, as reported by a questionnaire. And in this case, they did do the recovery period properly. They continued to wear the compression gear for multiple days after the study. 
So even though my own poorly run experiment didn't give me the results I was expecting, the overwhelming evidence suggests that compression gear will help with recovery when done right. As always, if you enjoy this type of content, leave a like or a comment to let me know, and I will make sure to do more of it in the future.